In today's video, we are gonna be talking about seven different index funds to buy in 2021, and they are high growth. Preferably, I'd recommend two to three years if the stock market's down in the short term. And for a long-term investment, which would be awesome, would be five to 10 years. And yeah, so the first one is going to be VTI. VTI tracks a Vanguard total stock market exchange, and it's heavy in sectors like information tech, healthcare, consumer discretionary, and financials. These are the top 10 holdings. A few are Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. If you invest $200 monthly into this index fund at a 10% return for 40 years, it'll be worth $1,127,973.33. And currently there is 3,783 holdings right now in the VTI. VTI is currently trading at $217.50, has a 52-week low of $149.85, and a 52-week high of $219.65. One year ago, it was trading at $164.10, and now, like I said, it's trading at $217.50. And in that year, it's done a 38.5%-ish increase, which is very high. And its net assets are $1.21 trillion and has a dividend yield of 1.30%. In the past five years, it's done 20.5% on average and it has a PE ratio of 0.03. The second index fund that is high growth is going to be VOO. VOO tracks the S&P 500 and has a total of 509 holdings at the moment. It's heavy in sectors like information technology, healthcare, consumer discretionary, and financials. A few of their top 10 holdings are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. 85.45% of VOO's holdings are in large cap, and it's currently trading at $385.01. It has a 52-week low of $272.77 and a 52-week high of $388.68. One year ago, it was trading at $295.06. And now, like I said, it's trading at $385.01. And in that year, it has a 35-ish percent increase. Its net assets are $731.3 billion. Its dividend yield is 1.41%. And its expense ratio is 0.03, which is very low. And on the five-year return, it has an average return of 20%. The third index fund is going to be ARC-Q. It's the highest return of all these index funds that I chose, and it's owned by Kathy Wood. It tracks ARC's Automus Technology and Robotics ETF and has a total of 48 holdings. And because of the fact that it has less holdings than the others, it's more volatile because there's less of a diversification which there's like 509 like i said in voo so it's heavy in sectors like industrials consumers discretionary and information tech sectors a few of its top 10 holdings are tesla trimble inc alphabet inc and jd.com 52.51 percent in large cap and it's currently trading at 80 dollars and 65 cents it has a 52 week low of $43.45 and a 52-week high of $101.11. One year ago, it was trading at $47.45, and now, like I said, it's trading at $80.65, which is a 72-ish percent increase, which is very high compared to the other ones that I'm talking about. It has net assets of $3.28 billion, a dividend yield of 0.79%, and an expense ratio of 0.75, which when I bought it, I didn't have one, and it depends what app you're using, I'm assuming, like TD Ameritrade, they don't charge a commission fee to buy something. The five-year return is 63-ish percent on average. The fourth index fund is going to be SCHG. It tracks the Schwab US large cap growth ETF. It's heavy in sectors like information tech, communication services, consumer discretionary, and healthcare, and has a total of 235 holdings. 
a few of the top 10 holdings are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. 87.77% of Schwab holdings are in large cap companies. All these index funds I'm talking about, I believe in long term, they're diversified and historically they do 8 to 11 percent so yeah it's currently trading at 137.07 dollars cents and a 52-week low of 95 dollars and 85 cents and a 52-week high of 142 dollars one year ago it was trading at 101 dollars and 88 cents and it's now trading at 137.7 cents and in the past year it's done 36 and a half ish percent at the time of filming the video. Its net assets are $14.59 billion. It has a dividend yield of 0.46% and its expense ratio is 0.04%, which is also very low. In the five year return, it's done an average of 30.8%. And yeah, the fifth ETF is going to be SPY, ticker symbol SPY. And it tracks the S&P 500 and has a total of 507 holdings right now. It's heavy in sectors like information tech, healthcare, consumer discretionary, and financials. A few of its top 10 holdings are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. And 85.40% are in large cap companies. It's currently trading at $420.49, has a 52-week low of $296.00 and four seventy four cents and a fifty two week high of four hundred twenty two dollars and eighty two cents. One year ago it was trading at three hundred twenty dollars and seventy nine cents and now it's trading at four hundred twenty dollars and forty nine cents like I said and in the past year has a thirty five ish percent increase. The sixth index fund is going to be IVV. It tracks the iShares S P five hundred ETF and has total holdings of five hundred nine and it's currently heavy in sectors like information tech, healthcare, consumer discretionary, and financials. A few of its top 10 holdings are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Facebook. And 85.41% of IVV's holdings are in large cap companies. So IVV currently trades at $420.41, has a 52 week low of $296.49, and a 52 week high of $424.43. One year ago, it was trading at $322.01. And like I said, now it's trading at $420.41. And since then, it also has a 35-ish percent increase like the last index funds that we went over, which was SPY, I believe. Its net assets are $278.55 billion and has a dividend yield of 1.36%. And has an expense ratio of 0.03 and a five year return on average of 19.7%. The final index fund that is high growth is going to be VGT, which is the ticker symbol, and it tracks the Vanguard Information Tech ETF. It's heavy in sectors like tech hardware, storage, and per pearls, however you say that. I have no clue and IT services. A few of its top 10 holdings are Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Visa. And 83% of VGT's holdings are large cap companies. And VGT has a total of 332 holdings currently. And VGT is currently trading at $368.73 has a 52-week low of $258.61 and a 52-week high of $388.73. One year ago, it was trading at $272.70. And like I said, now it's trading at $368.73. And in the past year has did about a 39% increase of filming the video and has a net asset of $50.39 billion and a dividend yield of 0.72%. Its expense ratio is 0.10% and a five-year return of 47-ish percent at the time I filmed this video also. So yeah, and uh, if you got this from the video, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Also go in the link below for a Robinhood link. 
you can open it up and we'll both get a free stock. It's valued up to $1,850. And like and subscribe for more. I'm doing a series on like monthly stocks too, not just index ones. And yeah, I post every Monday and maybe sometimes Fridays. So yeah, have a good day and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.